share this with others. Uh, so, uh, Paul, I think we're just going to run through this. Hopefully, we'll have a few more folks uh, join us as we uh, proceed here, um, but I think we'll get started. Um, and obviously, it's a small group here, so we can just uh, you know, answer your questions as we go and chat a bit. Uh, but I do, uh, let me start out by welcoming you to the SUNY CUNY Faculty OER Roundtable webinar. Uh, my name is Josh Barron. I'm the Executive Director for Lumen Learning here at the Northeast. And the session today is going to focus on Waymaker Biology for Majors uh, OER course, and specifically the work that uh, Dr. Tori Matthews has been doing at Monroe uh, Community College, uh, implementing this course over the last uh, two semesters. So just a quick rundown here on what we're going to try to uh, cover in the time that we have. I'll do a brief introduction to uh, Waymaker so that you get a little bit more familiar with the platform. I'll do a quick demo, it will be uh, lightning fast, but again, just to give you a visual understanding of how some of the things work and what the students see as they're using it. Uh, I'll share a little bit uh, in terms of national uh, research findings, uh, and then I'll introduce uh, Tori more formally and turn it over to him to share the work that he's been doing at Monroe Community College, talk about student impact, response students has, lessons learned, and then we'll uh, do some Please as we go, and uh, we'll make sure we uh, pause and, and chat because uh, we want to make this as interactive as possible. Um, so uh, a quick uh, little background here on Lumen Learning, uh, if you're not familiar with us, I think all of us share this common mission around enabling unprecedented learning for all students, and we do this really by combining the benefits of open educational resources with instructional technology platforms. And we find that when we bring the two together, we're able to not just reduce costs for students, which is also obviously a big part of uh, moving to OER, but at the same time, have a positive impact on student uh, learning in terms of things like final course grades going up, completion rates going up, and so forth. Uh, and we're particularly focused on doing this uh, with at-risk student populations. Um, and that's a, a group that we're just very dedicated to helping. Uh, if you're not familiar with the uh, uh, partnership that we have with SUNY and CUNY, I just wanted to mention that we've been working with both for a couple of years. Um, SUNY and CUNY have now kind of started to collaborate very closely on their uh, support and, and, and uh, scaling of OER across both systems. If you haven't been to the open-nys.org website, I'd encourage you to do that. You'll find a lot of resources there. A lot of great uh, stories from faculty members in addition to the one you'll hear today from Tori. Uh, and you'll also be able to uh, reach out to the folks at these two groups and uh, get assistance if you need it, finding OER materials, implementing them, scaling. And that's what our partnership is about too, is helping um, uh, both organizations uh, support faculty in the adoption of, of OER. It does look like we've gotten a few more participants, so great to um, have you guys join. I'll just repeat that I'm going to do a quick introduction here and turn it over to Tori in a minute, but uh, please uh, post questions in the chat area as you get them, um, and we'll pause and answer them as we go. So uh, very briefly here in terms of the Waymaker platform, I think it really is a great example of what I mentioned earlier in terms of Lumen's mission of combining open educational resources with next generation courseware. The project began in 2013 through a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation grant that Lumen was leading uh, along with about eight other institutions around the country. And so we started by building out the platform and then implementing it at some large scale at a number of these institutions. Um, and did some research around student impact, and I'll share some of that research again here in, in just a minute. There's kind of four major design principles that uh, Waymaker follows in terms of uh, how it works. I already mentioned, obviously, the use of open educational resources. That's a major uh, strategy around reducing costs for students and ensuring day one access to the materials. Uh, we also embed a lot of mastery learning um, methodology, and so the idea is students get lots of opportunities to practice their um, activities, uh, kind of demonstrate their understanding stuff as they're going through content, and then really are asked to demonstrate mastery of these concepts before they move on to the next set of materials. 
Uh, there's a lot of individual feedback for students, and so there's underlying analytics running as students are engagement in materials, and that's used to help provide feedback to the students on where they should focus more of their study time, where they have to weaknesses, um, and that leads what we find directly to them doing better in the course. And the last is an analytics-based faculty uh, dashboard set of tools that allows you as faculty to go in and again, uh, using the underlying analytics that's running, see which students are struggling in the course, and then you have some tools and I'll show you this in just a second to reach out to those students and uh, provide some assistance. Uh, I'm going to move over now and do this uh, lightning demo and, and then hit the research and turn it over to Tori. Um, one thing I skipped because uh, it was just Paul here when we started, if you want to just take a minute to introduce yourselves in the uh, chat room, maybe mention which institution you're at, and if you have any general questions coming in here, uh, why don't you put those there too. This gives us an idea of where we should focus some of our, our, our time here. So let me move over to do this lightning demo here, and I'll just check. Where are you seeing my screen here, the uh, Waymaker screen? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, great. Uh, again, I'm going to do this real quick, skip over a lot, but just to give you a visual understanding of what this looks like, and in a minute, Tori will share some of the work he's done to customize some of these materials within uh, the learning management system. And I should mention, you're seeing this embedded and integrated into the Blackboard learning management system. It can be integrated to almost any major LMS that you might be using, <clears throat> and so you're able to uh, take advantage of the learning management system tools, as well as the tools I've mentioned here for uh, Waymaker. So I'm going to go into the study plan here. Uh, each module has a study plan. It has these three sections, get it started, dive in, and finish strong. Again, I'm just going to highlight a few key things here. <coughs> Excuse me. After going through some kind of uh, background on kind of real-world applications for the concepts they're going to be learn learning, students then uh, take this pre-assessment, which is a way for them to kind of get some initial feedback on where they have some strengths and weaknesses. I'm just going to flash through this. I was tempted to uh, ask participants to answer their questions, and we could grade them, but decided to skip that in the interest of time. Uh, so I'll just go through these real quick, and the student then gets some initial feedback. I, actually, not too bad, got 50%, so it tells you where you have some prior knowledge and understanding, where you might want to focus more of your time. And then it doesn't give you the right answer, but it tells you what you got right or wrong and connects that to the specific uh, content areas that you'll be studying in this particular unit. I'm going to go back to the study plan now, and I'm just going to activate uh, some fake student data that uh, we put in here just for demonstration purposes. So give me a sec to show that. So once a student has taken that pre-assessment, the content tiles where the materials are are then color-coded to help them figure out where they might need to spend more time because they have some uh, weaknesses and where they have some, some prior knowledge. I won't go through these right now, but you can see that each one of them has a set of materials. Some of these include interactives and video materials and so forth. And then there's a self-check here at the end. So each unit has a self-check. And again, that's part of that mastery learning kind of approach I mentioned uh, earlier. When they're done going through the materials, then they uh, will take a uh, quiz here, a graded quiz. Open that back up. Uh, the graded quiz by default has two attempts on it, and the idea again is that once they go through one attempt, they're going to get the students going to get some uh, feedback as well about where they might want to focus their time before they take their second attempt. And you can see I've just changed the color coding to reflect that. So in this case, they'll they would have been directed to, to study these uh, four tiles a bit more before taking the second attempt um, on their quiz. So the last thing I'll show is the faculty dashboard, just again to give you a basic understanding of how that works. And so I'm going to go into the dashboard here. And go to faculty tools. You can see it's indicating there are three students who are struggling right now on the course. That's uh, based on the analytics that's running behind the scenes. You can go and see what students those are. I can uh, click on the student and get a, a more detailed view of what they're doing and where they're struggling. In this case, I can see that Justin's only gotten a 75 in the first quiz attempt in the cell structure area. Get a little bit more details about him three days ago. And so at this point, I might feel like, okay, I think Justin really needs to get, um, you know, some outreach from me to kind of intervene a little bit. I can come back to the dashboard. 
click on the messaging tool, which allows me to send out a message to Justin and say, hey, why don't you come to my office, or maybe you should practice some more, or review some more materials and so forth. It's pretty intelligent in that it inserts the area that the student's struggling in, so you don't have to go back through the quizzes and figure that out, just kind of uh, knows that from the analytics. And it gives you a template to use so that you can uh, save some time and just send out a templated message, but you can also change this and customize it to whatever you might might want. There's also automated messaging in the interest of time. I'm not going to go over that, but the automated messaging allows you to kind of have certain triggers where students, let's say, who are not doing enough self-check will get some reminders and what we sometimes call nudges to uh, have them uh, continue using the, the, uh, the self-check and, and do better. Okay, so I'm actually trying to find my chat window. There we go. Let's see if there's any any chat. Uh, don't see those, no problem. Okay, so let me uh, wrap up here and then I'll uh, introduce Tori and, and turn it over to him. So the last thing I'll do is just show some of these research findings from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation project that we uh, were part of that started all this. So uh, this is one finding from a focus study we did at Cerritos College, which is one of the partners in the grant. And we looked at what's sometimes called uh, course throughput. So the idea is to look at, of all the students who start a course, how many make it through the drop, the drop period, and then end up with a C or better in the course. And you can see that there was almost a 20 point difference here between the control group who are using a combination of traditional publisher textbooks and um, what I'll call traditional OER, OER without a personalized excuse me, learning platform like Waymaker. Uh, and so you can see that Waymaker, you know, has made a, a significant difference here in, in student outcomes and at the same time, again, reducing cost. I mentioned earlier that working with that risk to us at Lumen, the, uh, we looked at what's uh, often called the Pell uh, penalty, and so the idea here with the research findings have shown that students who are Pell eligible tend on average to do uh, less well uh, academically than their uh, non-Pell eligible peers, <coughs> and Pell eligibility being a proxy for uh, uh, income status. What we found was that the students who are Pell eligible students who are using uh, Waymaker uh, were able to actually perform very close to their non-Pell eligible peers who are not using Waymaker. So in a sense, it's closed that Pell penalty gap. Um, and I think it's great evidence that, uh, you know, combining OER to save costs with technology platforms like this do have a really significant uh, impact on uh, student outcomes. And if you pause a question here. Yeah, there's definitely a, a sandbox is what we call it, uh, Paul, that we can uh, get you access to. We just have to create an account so you can get in there. And we, we do that only because uh, the, uh, courses come with uh, all the quiz questions and so on and so forth, and so we, we want to make sure that only faculty members get access to that rather than uh, students, for example. And I'll, at the end here, I'll talk about uh, how to go ahead and, and um, uh, get access to the sandbox. So I'm going to now, uh, if I can get my screen to cave here, hold on one sec. I'm going to introduce Tori and turn it over to him. And uh, Tori, probably, if, you know, after I get started here, I'll uh, turn it over to you. You can share your screen and okay. And um, sorry, I'm I try to bring up your bio, Tori, so I can uh, do justice to your your prior work <laughs> here. And I'm, my screens are overlapping, so apologies here as I try to. It's okay. Uh, get the right thing up. Okay, now I think I got it. So let me introduce uh, Dr. Tori Matthews. Uh, Dr. Matthews holds a doctorate of philosophy from the University of Alabama at Birmingham with concentrations in cell biology and neuropharmacology. He completed his doctoral research and postdoctoral fellowship at the University of Rochester Medical Center. During his postgraduate studies, Dr. Matthews became heavily involved with community outreach initiatives aimed at promoting science and research careers among elementary age underserved populations. These experiences led Dr. Matthews away from the lab bench and into the classroom where he has taught science to students ranging from pre-K through graduate school. Currently, he has recently been promoted to assistant professor at Monroe Community College, congratulations again, uh, Tori, where he teaches open educational resource classes and subject training ranging for introductory biology, which you'll see here shortly, to anatomy and physiology and molecular 
genetics. I also want to personally thank uh, Tori for, for joining the session. Um, it's been awesome to work with you over the last year or so, and uh, it's always really inspiring to hear what you're doing with your students. I really appreciate that. Oh, my pleasure. So let me uh, end my screen sharing, and you can share your screen and okay. get things over. And again, I'd encourage folks to ask questions here as we go. Okay. I'll take over here. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. Um, I'll start by saying uh, first that it has also been a pleasure working with you. Um, uh, um, OER has definitely changed the way I see education. Uh, probably better to say it's actually kind of confirmed what I've always thought education should be, something that is accessible to everyone. So um, I appreciate that and I appreciate what you guys at Lumen are doing and how you're considering what's best for the student. Um, I want to take a little time today to just talk about some of the things I've been doing here at Waymaker and, and OER and the impact that it's having on students and their success and their engagement, especially in um, biology. Um, I do teach intro biology, general biology, anatomy and physiology, and genetics. And every single course that I teach here at Monroe now, it contains at least some component of OER. Um, the class I'm talking about today will be our general biology course, which is completely OER, and we use Waymaker. So um, I, I see my screen popping up here, and I think sometimes there's some questions being asked. Um, I don't want to ignore those. I think you're muted, Sorry, Jeff. that was me. I was just okay. uh, noting with the group that you could ask questions, so okay. ignore that one. Okay. So um, I'm just going to share a few highlights and um, open it up for questions. And um, I, I will want to kind of start here and say um, – a lot of the reason, my motivation behind this, I think is the same that most people are interested in OER is that um, I I am very much interested in, in kind of understanding this dynamic between like science and particularly why people from underserved populations don't find themselves involved in the STEM fields. Um, I am a first generation college student and I love biology and I, I teach so many students who don't and I'm always asking myself, kind of how did that happen? Because I can't imagine not loving biology. It's, it's what I do. I was a research scientist for years. Um, and I started teaching because, you know, and it's, I kind of fell into the job. You know, I was in grad school and then started working with these programs after school, after school programs, and it led me here. And it's been a life-changing, life-altering, and extremely impactful um, experience. And I enjoy every day of it. So. Um, I want to first talk a little bit about uh, Monroe Community College and in particular a little bit about Monroe County. And so Josh mentioned in, in his um, introduction this, this idea of how um, Waymaker and Lumen is really focused on understanding how do we address these students that, you know, tr traditionally are low income and, and how is something like OER going to impact their ability or their access to education and their success towards education. And without even knowing he was gonna say that, I had prepared this, you know, we, we roughly have about 12, I don't know, 13,000 students here at MCC that are enrolled um, and on campus um, for at least one course. We have another four to 5,000 that are online. So we have a pretty large campus. Uh, we actually have three campuses, um, one in Brighton, which is a suburb of um, Rochester, another one um, in the city, our downtown campus, and we have an applied tech, which is also out in the suburbs. 32% um, of our students are 25 or older. And the reason why I mention that is because these are people who have lives. Like, you know, school is not the only thing they do. They are working, um, they have family and children. In other words, they have other obligations. And not just in terms of times, but also monetarily. They are trying to come back to school because they, they want a better life or trying to set a better example for their children, but they still have to work while they're doing it, the majority of them. 81% um, of our students are from Monroe County. And why is that significant? Well, first, Monroe County is huge. Um, so the city is big, but there's a lot of suburbs, suburbs around it. In the city of Rochester, um, the poverty rate rests at about 36%. That means 36% 30%, of the people are making around $20,000 a year. That's what's coming into their household. And we're not really talking about how many children they have. That's, that's just what they're making. 
Um, if you look countywide, 44% um, of the students qualify for free lunch. That's countywide. If you go into the city, and I know because I work with students in the city, I have a couple of after school programs that I do with the YMCA, and those programs are directed at students who do receive free lunch. And in some schools, the numbers are as high as like 92, 95%. So, and, and these are the students who are going to be coming to MCC. That's our goal. We got to get them out of high school and, and into college. Um, um, I, I use Waymaker for my general biology course. Um, basically really after the conversation I had with Josh and he was telling me about it and you kind of saw an introduction, what Waymaker can offer in terms of, um, helping to really visualize kind of what our students are experiencing and, and troubles and issues that they may be having and, and helping to actually, I want to say, tailor the content so that it can address student needs. Um, and as a scientist, first and foremost, um, I, I love data and metrics. Um, I, I think it's, it's really awesome when I can actually, you know, if I'm going to sit down and talk with a student, I can, I can see the questions they've worked on and I can see the problems they've had. I see the questions that they continue to miss. In addition to that, I can kind of see how much time they've been actually putting into the work and studying online, at least for that portion. So it does enhance our conversation. Now, I found that it really connects us too because they see that I, I care enough to check on them. Um, but the big part of Waymaker was I, and this is the low end, um, in my general biology course, if you're coming in, you can't find these tech, you gotta get the lab manual, which, we actually prepare ourselves we write our lab manual. But the cost is still around 170 bucks. And that may not seem like a lot of money to some people, but to our students, um, they can do a lot with their $170. And so for some of them, it truly is a sacrifice. And only when you're taking care of your family and paying rent or a mortgage and you gotta buy food and the cars, you know, payment and gas, you know, that's a lot. And we're talking about 30, 35 sections per year that we're teaching here, roughly 20 to 24 students per section section. Um, and, and we were noticing some issues, um, retention rates and success rates. Um, I'm going to be general here because, uh, and, you know, I, I, I want to make sure that, you know, I'm looking at the big picture in terms of retention rate. It, it would, it would not be uncommon to see a class that started with 20 students. Um, by the end time you get to the end of the semester, you may be down to 10 or 12. And of that 10 or 12, um, there may be eight that will pass the class. And when I say pass, that's C or better. So we were use, losing a lot of students to withdraw, withdrawal students. And, and then um, some of the students were just failing. And my experiences with other courses, especially like anatomy and physiology, kind of led me to believe that would, there would be a better way. So um, I adopted Waymaker um, going on a year or so ago now. But as Josh mentioned, I started playing with the sandbox probably about a year and a half ago just looking at Waymaker and seeing how I could adapt it. And um, I'll talk about what's happened in my classes. And I have a few notes here and I wanna go through. Um, here are some of the benefits. Um, day one, when students come to class, they have access to the material. And it is nothing like seeing them that first class and talking about Waymaker and explaining how they can access everything through, um, we use a learning management um, system here, um, showing them how to access it. And, and then most importantly, talking to them about cost and, and seeing their faces. Um, so I have really noticed um, an increase in student engagement. Um, and one of the best anecdotes I could kind of um, use to kind of illustrate that is, um, students are truly involved in like editing, like they, they read now. And I think a lot of that has to do with how Waymaker presents the information. Um, as Josh showed you when you were working through the modules in the introduction, um, Waymaker to them doesn't really look like a textbook. Um, it looks more like a website. And that's something they're familiar with. They're on them all day. So when they're reading through the material, they don't see it as text. <laughs> it's funny because um, 
in terms of um, assignments, I, I, I mentioned this, and it's one of my bullet points here on late assignments. I told Josh when I first started in the process of preparing everything, one thing I forgot to do was go in and change all the due dates on the assignments. And I actually forgot to add them. So I just listed the assignments that they were supposed to do, the quizzes, and I didn't put due dates on it. And by the time I figured it out, I went back to take a look and I had noticed that without putting due dates on it, approximately 70% of the class had already finished them. And that was shocking to me. And just asking students kind of what happened, they didn't see it as homework. It was there to help them. Um, back to editing, um, because it is, um, we have access to the material. If there are mistakes that are found, we can go in and fix it. I can talk with people at Lumen. Um, I can go in and edit the quizzes myself. Students have found it kind of a, it's kind of a, a badge of honor now if you catch a mistake. Because uh, that means you saw it and someone else didn't. And they love sending me emails. And even better, they love telling me about it in class. And so then I get to fix it. And they get to see something that they saw actually change in the text and how it impacts the rest of the class. Um, also, um, this is a big one. I remember the first time I taught this class OER. Um, at the time I did it, I sent an email to 20 students that were registered for the course at that time. And I explained what OER was and I explained Waymaker. About a week and a half after I sent the first email, I sent another just to remind students, you know, this is about uh, three or four days before class was supposed to start. I had 20 students register for the class at that time. The class can hold a max of 24, technically. When I got to the class, I had 36 people waiting. And, I, and, I, and at this time, we weren't even able to designate OER in our master schedule. So they'd heard it word of mouth. And one of the hardest things that day was telling, you know, like nine people they couldn't stay because MCC let me overload to 27. And the beauty of that is, of those 27 that enroll, 25 finished the class. And I only had two people, no, three people finished with a D or less. That's a pretty big deal. Um, I, I mentioned here automated responses. Um, Josh talked about one of the things that you have access to as an instructor is the ability to set up these responses that um, cater to students. So if they're doing an assignment and they don't reach a certain threshold, or they take a quiz a couple times and they don't do so well. These responses go out and tell them, hey, listen, I see you're having problems with this. You know, maybe you should come talk to my come talk to me or meet me in office hours. Um, and likewise, if they're doing well, it sends out an email saying, hey, you're doing really great. Keep up the good work. I see the hard work paying off. Um, when when we first started, and Josh will probably smile, you know, I I I, I bucked against this. I, I did not want to do it. Um, I told Josh that I was the type of professor who felt like I already took that extra step with my students and, and I, I made it a purpose to communicate with them and get to know them because I, I found that it always helps with the learning environment, the learning community, and I, I didn't want to do it. And I told him I thought it was disingenuous. So, but um, he asked nicely, couple of times. <laughs> so I, I decided that I would. And I, I went into class and I told my students, I told them, I said, listen, you're going to get some emails from me. Some of you are going to be doing this homework at like one o'clock in the morning. That's the beauty of Waymaker. Right? You can do it whenever you want. Um, you're going to get an email if you do good and it's going to say, congratulations, awesome job. You might get an email that says, hey, looks like you're having some problems. I just want you to know that I am not up at 1 a.m waiting for you to complete your assignment so that I can email you. And they all kind of chuckled. I was like, it's automated. So I just want you to know. And even though I said that, I still had students who would email me back saying, you know, thanks for checking in on me. I, I am having some problems. I'm going to come to your office hours. And another student would email back and say, thanks. I, I, I thanks for noticing my progress. I, I've really been studying hard. I, I appreciate you checking in on me. And I'm thinking to myself, did they not hear me? Regardless, though, it's become like a running joke. So they know it's not from me, but it still impacts them. And I'll still get students 
who come to class and say, hey, thanks. You know, when I finished at three o'clock this morning after my, my night shift, um, I, I really appreciate you standing up to email me back and tell me how great I did on like biological molecules. Uh, it really helped me. <laughs> so um, that, that's a big deal. So it really does work. Um, students are more engaged. Um, in terms of student responses, of course, the cost savings. You know, dramatically reducing the amount of money they have to come out of pocket with is just not something that um, we can ignore. Um, it's just my opinion, but this idea of um, having a large textbook that you have to carry around in the day and age when people have these devices, cell phones and tablets, and they can access this information digitally, that idea of the huge textbook is a bit antiquated, and especially when we're talking about um, introductory level courses. You know, I'm a, uh, I do understand the need for major courses in those textbooks, I get it. But for general bio and general anatomy and physiology and chemistry and math, it's out there. And students truly appreciate it. Um, when I ask them about why they're so involved and invested in their work, one student told me this, and it was kind of really impactful. They said that they didn't, when they open a textbook normally, that she told me that she felt upset because every time she opened it, she thought about how much money she spent on it and how much it cost her. And those aren't the same thing. How much money she spent on it and how much it cost her. In terms of cost, it was what she had to do without in order to get that textbook, not just the money she had to spend. It was those two things together. So she said when she would open Waymaker, and to think about the fact of how, you know, how little it cost and, and, and how much it was helping her, she smiled. She was happy to do it. And that, that just that psychological change impacted how she interacted with the class, how she interacted with me, how she interacted with the material, and how she saw the subject differently. She's a student who proclaimed that she hated biology when we started. And though she was not an A student, she did pass with a C and she passed with a greater appreciation of the subject. And if I can do anything in my job, if I can take a student who hated it before, they can appreciate it when they leave and understand enough to get a passing grade, that is a great thing. Um, retention rates, of course, um, in my classes, I would say they were normally high, but higher now with better grades. Like students stay, they persist. Um, I'm on spring break right now and I have students emailing and asking to come in. Um, I have students emailing me all the time with questions because it is an online platform. So when they have a question immediately, they can just go send an email about it. So it's not like reading in a book and then I gotta go type an email. Here's the question, they'll highlight it, screenshot it, send it to me so I'll know. Um, my pass rates have gone up. Um, my goal always was to consider what was best for my students. And I can say this honestly, um, Waymaker works. I am still learning it. There's a lot to it and I am still figuring out. I know it is even more powerful than um, I know because every semester I get a little bit better at it. But I will say this, I, I would never compromise my students' education. Um, I appreciate um, what education has done for me. I, I have a love for biology and it means a lot to me. Um, it's always been one of the most, my favorite subject in school. And so if I believed in any way that what we were offering them through Waymaker wasn't better, you know, at least comparable, but in my, in my view, actually better than what I see with a traditional textbook, um, I wouldn't do it. Um, the beauty of it is, you know, now, I was the first person in my department to teach a course OER. Um, as of this semester, we have one, two, three, six courses at OER, and they span um, essentials of anatomy and physiology, general biology, one and two, microbiology and molecular genetics. And we are continuing to expand. So my 155, my general biology course, is expanding now. Another professor has picked it up. Um, she wanted to do it. So um, people are starting to see this effectiveness. Students are starting to talk about it. And I will say this, now that it is actually listed in the master schedule and the word about OER is getting out, 
Um, I never have a problem with my classes filling. Like students always look at this and you know, you ask any person, if, if I can get the same thing, if I'm looking at the item and it's in two different places and in one place, it cost me 170 bucks and in another place, it cost me significantly less and it's the same quality, then that's what I'm going to choose. The same quality for less money. So I don't even think that that's, um, I think that's just good common sense. I mean, I think we wouldn't do anything any different. So um, that's kind of a little about what we're doing. I don't know what questions people would have. Um, I did want to show you this briefly. Hold on one second. Well, you're playing that, Tori. I, I'll just jump in here, and that's a great um, set of points that you've shared, and exactly why we're so dedicated to this work. Uh, we have, through the partnerships I mentioned earlier with SUNY and CUNY, uh, faculty members and students uh, can use Waymaker without any cost to them. Uh, the, the systems are covering those uh, at this point. So I just wanted to mention that um, since you're talking about you know the cost issues there. Okay. Yeah, that is that is great for them right now. And I love it because they are um, they are so involved with this process that they want to make it better for the next students, and so I'm I'm loving it. And I just wanted to kind of show you how I've set it up on my Blackboard page for my students. Um, first, what Josh showed you is that when you when you get the when you get the Waymaker program, it comes as a series of basically packages that are topic based. So um, I'm going to show you how I've kind of organized my course. And, and one of the beauty, the beautiful things about it is I always had, when I was learning it in, in college and when I started teaching it using a traditional textbook, I was always thinking to myself, kind of what's the best way to kind of integrate ideas and, and I always thought about, man, wouldn't it be nice if I could move this chapter over here? So if it, it's not chapter seven, it seems like it would work better as chapter five because these two things kind of go together. So the beauty of it is what I've done in my classes, I've, I've taken all the packages that they sent through Waymaker and I've created modules. And I'll, I'll click in one to kind of show you how it works. So, so my module one, if I click in it, you'll see that um, I've, here grouped in module one, the Waymaker um, packages that are titled themes in the study of life and scientific method, and the other one's the chemistry of life. And so it looks just like what Josh showed you. You click in it, go through the study plan, um, once it launches, and it, they work through it. Um, and you click on one and it'll kind of take you through different parts and chapters. And there's always these little self checks that are there as they're reading through to kind of make sure they kind of get an idea of what they just learned and how they're using it. But the beauty of it is this, um, I found that students don't really care much. If they're not interested in the subject, they really don't care if they don't understand why it's important. And so one of the best things about Waymaker is this why it matters part. Um, so it tells them why what they're about to learn is important and really how it's gonna connect to the things that we're gonna do later. And then it, it, it gives them opportunity to see what they know already. So they kind of get an idea, okay, well I kind of got a good grasp on this stuff. So I can kind of get through this pretty quick and, or, or hey, I'm, I'm having a hard time. So maybe I'm gonna need to put a little bit more work in. But I love having that up front. I mean, how many times have we done that with like pre-quizzes and post-quizzes and you know, how many times have we kind of had to stress that when we're teaching? I know it's a part of my pedagogy to kind of see what my students are. Um, after they finish these um, um, these different segments here, they go down and they put it all together, see how everything works together, everything they just learned. They build basically a concept map so they can see all the pieces together. And then they take a quiz. Um, in my class, I give them two attempts at the quizzes. So if you don't do so well the first time, that means you need to go back and review the material. And I think that's fair. Uh, in addition to that, um, like I said here, um, if I look in metabolic pathways, here I've put um, everything from cell respiration, both anaerobic, anaerobic, and uh, photosynthesis into one place. And the reason why I put it in one place is so they can see everything. They have, in addition, they have the lecture notes in here, which are just PowerPoints they can go in and download. 
and they have websites too, things that I've found just to be helpful that I give them basically in a Word document, places where they can go to get extra help. Um, I have post lab quizzes, writing assignments, lab materials, and the all important folder here, succeeding with Waymaker. So it tells them how to use the material. Um, it, it took some time to put it together. I will say that plat um, Waymaker gave me a great platform to work from. So it wasn't, um, it wasn't a, as daunting a task. It was really just taking the information that was there and figuring out how it works for you and your class. Um, the last thing I'll say before we take questions, because I see I'm at 1015 exactly, is that um, it is, Waymaker is a tool. It, it won't make a person who's not a good teacher a good teacher. But if you are a good teacher, I think it'll make you better. Um, that's my take on it. And, and the excitement I have for it is due to the fact that I, I see more students passing that class. And I talk about 155 is kind of being a gateway course because if you don't pass 155, you don't go on to 156, which is the second part of General Bio 2. And for students who have these goals of working in STEM fields or getting degrees in STEM fields, if you can't pass General Bio 1, it really does bottleneck you. Students change their major, they change their mind. We lose a lot of people in these introductory courses. And I don't think it's fair that we lose students based on a lack of finance. It's more so than a, a lack of, of potential. Um, when money is a barrier that prevents a person from achieving their goals, something is wrong. And, and when there is an option that can help students to leap over that barrier and we have access to it, I think, at least for me, I feel morally obligated to present it to them um, the best way I can. First time I taught it, it wasn't perfect, but I was a good teacher. So I still got the material through and that's what I focus on. The second time is even better. I'm looking forward to next semester. I'm looking forward to sharing it with my colleagues. And you know, 71% of our students here at MCC, their goal is to transfer to a four year. And a lot of those need these general biology courses. So it's not only about getting them past general bio one, it's about helping them learn how to study, giving them that confidence so they can go on, and get that four year degree. A lot of them being first generation college students. And I understand the impact of seeing that first one come into the family and, and what that does for, not only for their children, but for their cousins and, and even inspiring their, their, their siblings and, and even their parents to go back to school. So. It's significant. It is, it, is, it is more than saving money. It truly is. Uh, it's saving money that has the ability to change people's lives. And even here, um, literally change the trajectory of, of people's lives and their children. So that's what I have to say. I'll give it back to you, Josh. Thanks uh, so much, Tori. Those are such kind of moving uh, words. And, um, you know, for the folks who have been putting so much time and effort into uh, putting Waymaker together, um, they're going to be really, really um, appreciative of, of what you're doing and, and the comments you made there. It's uh, something that, that we're very passionate about as well. I can tell you share that passion. We have uh, about 10 minutes left here. Um, so I definitely like to open it up uh, for any questions that, that folks have. Um, probably the best way of, of posting questions is in the chat room, and there's a button, I believe, at the bottom of your screen for, for getting in the chat. Um, I'll just go back to, uh, to Paul's question here while we wait to see if, if others uh, have any other questions, too. So I will follow up with an email, Paul, <clears throat> and to the rest of the group um, to see if you're interested in getting access to uh, the sandbox. If, if you are right now, just let me know in the chat window, and, and we'll just follow up and, and get you an account to get access to uh, uh, today or tomorrow. So let's uh, just give it another minute here to see if anybody else has questions. Uh, 
Okay, great. I see Nancy and Paul, you're both interested in the sandbox. So I'll just go ahead and set up access. It only takes a minute uh, for, for that. Um, I will note that there is a biology uh, for majors one, which is um, what we've been hearing from Tori about. There's also bio uh, majors uh, two, uh, so biology for majors two mm -hmm. uh, course. Um, and there's also a, non, a biology for non-majors that's just recently been uh, put together in, in WaveMaker as well. So I'll go ahead and get people into the Biology One sandbox, but if you're interested in the others, uh, you can uh, you can let me know as well. And we have someone here teaching using WaveMaker for part two of uh, general biology. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I, this is all just uh, new stuff. We were working on it in the fall, and it uh, got released in the spring. You know, in in the semester, so it wasn't something most people could adopt, but it's something that's uh, you know be available to folks uh, in the fall or or the summer too. So. Yeah, well, she's oh, wow. using it now. It's actually working great. Oh, and, oh great. Is she using yeah. the Waymaker version? or the Waymaker. Yeah, oh, okay, Waymaker. great. So she must have jumped on early. Um, yeah. She's using early it early in that release. The students, it's great because the students who were in the first Waymaker pilot with me are now with her for the second part of it. So. Great. Uh, Paul's asked another question about A and P anatomy and physiology. So that is available, uh, Paul. It's, it's not in the Waymaker platform yet. Um, we have another uh, technology uh, platform called, called Candela, which is in a sense more of a traditional ebook kind of format that allows for customization, but we don't have the analytics and personalized learning wrapped around it. Our strategy generally is to uh, move courses that are just available in Candela into the Waymaker platform over time. So AMP will likely be available as Waymaker at some point in the future. But if you're interested, I can just throw, what I'll do is I'll just send you the link to the uh, AMP Candela course and you can look at the content um, uh, that's available there. Which is, is mostly based on content from OpenStax. If you're familiar with OpenStax, they're a big publisher of OER textbooks and so we tend to uh, take that content as the foundation for the courses, enhance them with videos and interactives, uh, and then also wrap around the tools like like Waymaker and so forth. Any other questions here that folks have before we wrap up? So I'm not seeing any, so I really appreciate folks coming on. I know this is uh, a spring break for many folks, including Tori, so I appreciate uh, people taking some time to uh, to participate over the break. Um, and uh, thanks, Paul. Enjoy the presentation there. I will follow up with an email to everybody um, with the link to the recording in case you want to share this with your colleagues, and that way, too, if you have any other follow-up questions outside of what we've discussed, uh, be happy to, to respond back to those via email. Uh, we have a couple more roundtables coming up in the next uh, week or two. There's going to be one that's more focused on uh, math and another one that's more focused on uh, Waymaker Social Sciences. So um, you've probably seen those emails, and if you think your colleagues might be interested, please uh, feel free to share those. So thanks a lot, everybody. And again, really uh, thank you, especially Tori, for taking time uh, to do this. It was an awesome session and, and again you're very kind of inspiring words there so i appreciate everything you're doing to help get, build awareness my pleasure okay great uh, oop, uh i think i see an attendee's hand up i'm not uh, christine did you have a question there i see that you've raised your hand and ah uh, there you go. And I actually just turned on your audio, Christine, in case you wanted to talk. Uh, yes. So if, if uh, I, yes, let me actually just explain a little bit more. I should have said this earlier about the process. So basically, you know, we'll put you in a sandbox. You can take a look at the content, the tools. Uh, if you're interested in adopting and using uh, Waymaker, just let me know. And we'll send you um, a file called a course package, which you then import into your learning management system, just takes a couple of minutes, and then all of the content kind of automatically populates into the content folders that you saw Tori uh, and I demonstrating earlier. At that point, you can do a lot of customization within the LMS, so as you saw Tori did, you can rearrange stuff, um, organize the modules in whatever way you want, retitle them, you know, and so forth. Um, so, the, so there's, uh, plenty of time at this point to 
uh, select and get things set up for the fall. Um, and again, I'll just get everybody in the sandbox in that first step. I think the other thing is, um, I can. I think you probably um, noted this when you registered, but we uh, are in the process of setting up what's called uh, LTI connections at every SUNY institution and CUNY institution, which is the necessary uh, technology that allows us to integrate Waymaker into your learning management system. If you're at an institution where that uh, process hasn't been set up, that would be something else that we would need to do uh, prior to the fall semester. It's a very standard process. It also only takes a few minutes, but that's something else I'll follow up with you on if you're at an institution that hasn't gotten that set up yet. I'll put you in touch with the folks at SUNY OER Services, or, or in CUNY, we actually have it set up at all institutions. So if you're at a SUNY institution and it's not set up, I can follow up and, and have someone help you with that. Other questions? Those are good ones. All right. Well, again, uh, I will get an email out. So if you do have more questions, uh, just feel free to, to reply back and uh, ask them and I'll answer them. I just want to note that I'm about to uh, start a brief trip, so it might take me a day or two to get some things out to everybody, but I'll definitely be sending those out shortly. Okay, thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great rest of uh, the day and uh, appreciate your participation.